Hi guys, it's ASPYT and welcome back to a brand new video. This is the one you've been waiting for. This is my, after about three or four days working with this phone, this is my full review up to now. And basically I wanna share my personal opinion with its use over the last few days to let you guys know whether I think it's worth parting with your hard earned cash. If you have a 5T or a 5 already, and just in general, if you just want an upgrade, whether I think it is a viable option. So let's get straight to it. Right, so first let's talk a little bit about OnePlus as a whole. Now they are a company over the last sort of four or five years that are still compared to some others in their infancy. For the amount of success they have had, they are still a very new company. And what they stood for originally was to try and deliver a product which could match up to those top flagship well-known phones, but at a cheaper price. Price. So what we're going to do with the OnePlus 6 is to see whether they have delivered again. They're also a company who claim to be very heavily reflective of the consumer. So if you have ideas about what you would like in, in a new product or what you don't like about the current gen of their smartphone, their flagship, then they are keen to listen and hopefully improve in the future. Right, so first off, I'm just going to flash all of the specs that you might need to know on the screen now so we get it out the way so that we're not bogged down with numbers. So we're rocking a Snapdragon 845, the latest and greatest pretty much on the market in terms of processors. The Adreno 630 GPU. This variant has 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, although they will come in different variants and different prices. We'll get to price towards the end. On the front, we have the notch, of course, which houses the speaker and the front-facing camera. The front-facing camera is a 16 megapixel Sony sensor. And on the rear, we have a dual 60 megapixel and 20 megapixel camera, both with f1.7 aperture. The sensors are meant to be larger than the previous device to allow for better low light performance. Android 8.1 straight from the box with Oxygen OS over the top, which is their version, their skin on Android, which is very, very similar to stock. It's almost identical to the naked eye. There are just a few little things that are changed in order to optimize performance in their opinion. We have the alert slider there, which can go from silent to vibrate and to ring as well. Very, very handy if you want to switch quickly between the two. I do like that function. And they They've stuck with their guns, which is another thing that OnePlus tend to do. They have certain core values and certain core design features. On the bottom, we have headphone jack. Again, those core beliefs come back. Uh, Type-C charge and of course the speaker there. It will be available in three different colors, mirror black, like the one that I've got here, midnight black, and the silk white as well. The silk white will be available on June the 5th, and these two are available from the 22nd of May, which is tomorrow, I believe, if my maths is correct, and I can add one day to the 21st. So GSSE Maths, well done. Right, so straight on to design. Now, obviously the main feature between the 5T and the 6 is, as you've noticed, the side bezels are pretty much identical. The bottom bezel is slightly smaller on the 6, and of course we have the added real estate of the screen on the top, which includes the notch. Don't. Don't comment that you hate the notch. Because even if I don't do a video on a phone with a notch, somebody puts, I hate the notch. <laughs> now, of course, they've done this to make a larger display. We've got a 6.28 inch AMOLED 2280 by 1080 screen with a PPI density of 402. 84% screen to body ratio as well. So that is very, very impressive. Not the highest on the market, but still nevertheless a good effort. And while it's not a dull screen by any means, in really bright sunshine, you, you may have a few issues if you compare it to some of the Samsung panels and of course the LG G7, which goes up to a thousand nits. Now this is of course the mirror black version. And as you can see, it is a fingerprint magnet. There's already, as soon as you do that, you just get fingerprints all over the place. You can obviously wipe it down very easily or you can throw a skin or a case on it. Now my personal opinion of the glass over some of their older versions, like the 5T as an example, the matte black one here. Yes, I feel it does look and feel more premium being made of glass and metal than the standard one. And it was one of my my negatives about the 5T. Although I like the front, I felt the back felt not as premium as some other devices like I mentioned uh, in numerous reviews, the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 and Mi Mix 2S. The ceramic on that made it feel a bit more premium in the hand. The glass has that same effect. It does look very much like ceramic, but it is lighter than ceramic. So that uh, another reason why they chose glass over ceramic. Now, of course, having glass on the back enabled them to have wireless charging, but they didn't choose to have wireless charging, which is an interesting one for a lot of people and maybe a deal breaker for some people because some people use wireless charging all the time. 
Their opinion on wireless charging was a case that their dash charge, which you can get 60% battery in 30 minutes or a day's power in half an hour, which is the, the slogan they went with, which is probably better than what I just said. It is pretty much the quickest charging option on the market at this moment in time. Wireless charging isn't anywhere near as quick as that. So one of their core beliefs is always to not include something in the new phone, which doesn't necessarily enhance the performance of the device. And that leads me on to the fingerprint sensor. Of course, a lot of you guys were saying, I want to see the fingerprint sensor embedded in the display, which some phones already do, like the Vivo phone. And a lot of phones are in the process of doing that. And this is simply a similar situation. They don't feel that the under the screen technology is as efficient as the fingerprint sensor, which is located on the rear. And I can confirm this is, it's so quick. I mean, look, before I turn the phone round, it will be on. It's off now, right? I mean, it's, it's literally, it's, it's ridiculous. Off. Uh, it's, it's, it's so quick. It's so efficient. It works every time. My one criticism of the new fingerprint sensor over the 5T is I prefer the round one. Just so I simply think it's got more space to find. But yeah, I, I, I'm not a massive fan of the oval-ish. Is that oval? Is that oval-ish? Oval-ish. <laughs> Ish. Ish is such a weird word. Some people said that now that they've changed the camera to the middle from the top uh, right hand, so top left hand side, it would become an issue where you'd smudge the camera lens. I haven't personally found that an, an issue. While we're on that, we'll talk about face unlock as well. Now this is again, one of the fastest technologies on the market. So if we just try it now, so it's off and then simply I'll do that to turn it on the screen and then I'll turn it to me and it's on. Like it's, I'll try and do it more facing away yeah i mean it's literally it's it's lightning quick very very impressed with the two forms of getting into the phone also one thing i'm a little bit disappointed with with the fingerprint sensor is now there is no way of scrolling down or as far as i'm aware from testing so far i've only had it for a few days obviously i will be doing a follow-up video in uh, a, a week a couple of weeks and, and a month as well so i'll probably have two more videos on my reviews because things will change over time but on the oneplus 5t you can toggle your notifications by scrolling down on the fingerprint sensor you can't do that from what i can see so far unless there's a setting that i haven't done also on that same vein I don't like the fact that now the battery icon there doesn't have the percentage unless you swipe down. So if you swipe down, it becomes apparent. Otherwise, it's not there. So you have to physically do something. Whereas on the 5T, it is just there straight away. We have got a speaker in the notch as well as a speaker on the bottom, but this is just for phone calls, etc. It's not stereo speakers. We don't have to, we just have the one for audio, which is a bit disappointing and it is important for audio files. And while the sound isn't the best on the market, it is still pretty good. I'll just do a quick uh, version of the sound now. So I'll just play my unboxing video of this, which you can go and see up here. So I'll turn it up full volume as well. So let's get straight to it. <laughs> Welcome back to a brand new video. Like I said, now we have the OnePlus 6 here. So it is a fairly decent speaker. It's quite punchy, it's quite loud. And that audio for me is very similar to the 5T. Decent, de decent, Sean Connery. Decent volume and clarity, but it could do with having the stereo speaker aspect and it's not the best. There are better phone speakers, there's better audio on the market. If that is really important to you, there are better devices in my opinion. The Razer phone as an example. Now, as you can see here, we have the battery is low on the 5T and that brings me on to my next point. Battery is 3,300 milliamps, which is the same specs as the 5T, but apparently due to the Snapdragon 845, the Adreno 630, we should see a 10% bonus in terms of battery optimization over the 5T. I've not personally seen it so far, but again, 10% is quite hard to actually judge. And until I do actually side-by-side -side comparison battery tests, I can't really confirm or deny that case. But it's not a bad battery because the 5T was a brilliant performing battery compared to its rivals uh, back in 2017 when it was released. This will be no different, but whether it's better, I'm not so sure. Again, jumping to the comparison between the two, the Snapdragon 845, like we mentioned, over the Snapdragon 835, it's marginally better. It is a better processor. Obviously, it's a new generation. It's the new year on. Would you see it necessarily in real-time use? Again, marginal. If you have two devices that you're testing at the same time, you will notice them slightly quicker on the Snapdragon 845 than the 835. If you have the 5T, will you notice a massive difference if you jump? Will you? Is it worth that extra money? Some of you will say, Yes, absolutely. 
I'm not so sure. Also comparing the two, obviously the backs outside of the camera positions, etc. It's pretty much the same form factor. The size is exactly the same. The thinness is pretty much exactly the same, which is no bad thing because the 5T is a great device. Would I like to see a little bit more innovation? Possibly outside of the notch and a slightly smaller bezel at the bottom, it's it's pretty much the same phone from the outside. Again, if you don't have the 5T, then of course, most of you will think, well, that's definitely worth the upgrade on, on an older device. If you have the 5T, again, do you think it's necessarily added much? A, a kind of an incremental upgrade from the 5T. It's pretty much across the board in smartphones at this moment in time. There's, there's very little you can change on a smartphone in order to constantly innovate and change and make a different looking phone. There's only so many rules that you can bend. We've seen the same with Samsung this year. The S9 is very, very similar to the S8, both in its style and performance. There are upgrades, obviously. I feel that OnePlus are in the same sort of boat. There isn't too much until something drastically happens, design changes with bendable screens, all that sort of stuff. There's not really much they could do. Again, sticking with design, we'll talk about the colors, mirror black, midnight black, and silk white. Would I have chosen possibly, if you're having three colors, would I have chosen possibly a different color? Maybe having two black options for me is a bit wasted. I mean, black is a big selling color. I, that, I understand why they've done it. I would either just have two different colors, the white and the black, or perhaps like midnight blue or red or something like that might have been a better option, but again, not a deal breaker. Also having that glass back makes it more dangerous to drop. It will crack, I'm not gonna test it because I quite like it at the moment, but nevertheless, I think it will crack. Well, it obviously will damage, because I've dropped this quite a few times and it's a few dings, but other than that, we've got no problems. If you are one of these really clumsy people, don't wanna spend loads of money, and have a broken phone, then either get a case or possibly opt for the 5T or another phone that doesn't have that glass back because although it looks more premium, it is more prone to breaking. It is Gorilla Glass 5, so it is the strongest that you can get on the market. It's still fallible. Fallible's a good word, word of the day. Hashtag fallible. Right, so we're gonna delve a little bit into the software so we can see a few little tweaks they've done with the uh, skin over the top of Android. Number one, how to get rid of the notch if indeed you are in that camp. Dark theme you can add, obviously, which a lot of people will prefer. It's better for AMOLED displays. You'll get better battery life because obviously the pixels will shut off, etc. cetera. Um, as we scroll down, we want to go to display. Where is it? There we go, hit display. Then we've got notch display there. We can have it show the notch, we can hide the notch. So if we click on hide the notch and then come out, there you go, the notch is gone. Now, of course, then it looks even more similar to the 5T, but what is good, you've got the icon still in the top and not in the actual display like we've got on the 5T. A couple of months ago, it wasn't a feature they were looking to really include, but due to this big backlash, they have listened again to the consumer, so they've given you a possible option if you wanna use it. Because one of my biggest problems was I didn't mind having the notch on the normal display, but when you use media, when you're viewing YouTube, for example, it then becomes an issue like the Asus Zenfone 5 that I reviewed that I'll leave linked here. When you zoom in to cover the whole display, you get the notch there and it kind of feels odd. But with this, if you go to, we're gonna go back to display and I'm gonna change it back to the notch display. So show the notch. We've also got app display in full screen. So we can select apps in here to include the notch in the specific display, or we can leave it as default, which means that when you go into them and you pin like in YouTube and you zoom in, it doesn't have the notch in the display, which I think is really good because that was one of my biggest pet peeves about the notch. Also on that software front, we've got a gaming mode, which you can also toggle on in this section here, you've got a gaming mode, which you can click on there if you drag the icon up into your uh, settings bar. And basically what that does is it stops data or limits data going to other apps while you're playing games. It mutes notifications, etc. So if you are a big gamer on your smartphone, this is a very, very handy tool. And again, another addition of the Oxygen OS that they have added. So you can add apps for gaming mode as well so that it will automatically do it in the background. You don't have to constantly go onto gaming mode. You can just do it straight from here. That's another handy tool. And finally, Gestures. Now, you can normally have a navigation bar like normal at the bottom. I've got rid of it just to add a bit more screen real estate. And what it means is left and right side, if you swipe up from it goes back. So let's just go into Twitter as an example. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. Little plug. <laughs> if you click on the tweet as an example, I'm going to go to tweet. Now I'm going to swipe up from there and it goes back. Same from the left hand side, it goes back. If you swipe up from the middle, it goes home. And if you swipe and hold, 
it goes to recent app, your recent app store, which I think is again, a very, very handy thing to have. I like the gestures that they've done. Is it foolproof? No, there are a few things I would personally change. It can be improved with software updates, which we've had one software update already. And as well as a lot of this, I have the review unit here, I must stress. So I don't know whether there are a few things that they will change before the actual release. It's possible. Right, well, we may as well jump onto camera because it's been quite a long video so far. So I apologize if you're nodding off there. You can have some dash energy drink if you want to pump yourself through for another 10 minutes. Right, camera. So on the camera, we have pretty much the same as what we saw on the 5T. Photo, video, and portrait. The bonus this year is, of course, video now goes up to 4K at 60 frames a second. I did notice occasional bubbling of the autofocus, the pulsing sort of feeling as I was going through a couple of videos yesterday. Like I said, it might be because I've got the review unit that may be changed with a, a software tweak, I don't know. The audio is okay, it's not amazing, but the actual video quality is good. Now we're onto photos and the photos are very rich. The clarity is good, the contrast is good, the saturation isn't as much as something you would see perhaps on the Samsung S9, but on the whole, it does a very, very good job. The portrait mode was a bit indifferent for me. Some shots I took were looked absolutely amazing as you can see from the hand it just came out brilliantly there are some pictures that I took of my cat uh, there are some of them that looked brilliant uh, you know the blurring of the background looked great and the actual edge detection worked really really well there are others that didn't quite work as well so that was a, a bit indifferent for me but on the whole it did a relatively good job now onto low light situations, and one of the main reasons for enlarging the sensors on the OnePlus 6 was for low light situations. And yes, I can actually say that low light performance is much better than the OnePlus 5T. If you've got a moving target, moving target, it's not a hitman. Uh, if you've got a moving subject, sometimes you will still get a slight blur to them, but on the whole with still photos, it works really, really well. They just look much fresher, the photos, than the OnePlus 5T. With the advanced HDR as well, it brings out the shadows better than perhaps we saw before and enhances the lighting of the actual photo without blowing out and overexposing certain areas. And it does on the whole, again, a pretty good job. Onto the selfie camera, pretty much the same sort of story. There is one thing that they're adding with the software update and that's the portrait mode on the selfie camera. Of course, you'll get the blurred background and the edge detection on the face, shoulders, etc., which I think is a good thing to have, but I think they should have added it with the release of the phone. I don't think releasing a phone that's half-baked with certain features, there aren't many features that are half-baked, but that is a half-baked feature, I think should be just included. They should have, in my opinion, released the phone two weeks later and have it ready. That's just my personal opinion, but not a deal breaker again. The actual normal photo is very, very clear. There's not really too much more I can say about it. it is, it's a good selfie camera. Again, staying with the camera, we also have a slow-mo option this time as well. 480 frames a second at 720p or 240 frames a second at 1080p. One of the good features it does have is the ability to film a whole minute, I think the maximum of a minute's worth of footage all in slow motion and then you can pick and choose where you want that slow-mo to be. Dual SIM, so you can of course use it across multiple countries, very important for some people not others but it is that feature. No micro SD card slot which while a lot of you guys will see as a negative, the way they see it is that they don't want to include a, a potential for people to add S micro SD cards that don't have the same performance that they want in the smartphone it may cause problems it may lag the phone etc and that's something that they don't want so they do offer different storage options from 64 to 128 to 256 gig across the three different colors which of course will have different prices on to prices the leak from amazon a few days before the launch was pretty much correct so it starts from 519 euros, 469 UK sterling, 529 US dollars, and that converts to 35,000 Indian rupees. Now we're on to another massive feature of this device, and that is of course water resistancy. Now a lot of you guys are saying this is really, really important. Other flagships have IP rated phones. This one unfortunately isn't IP rated. I'm not quite sure why they didn't go that extra mile and get it done. I don't know. What they have said is it will be fine for using in the rain, for example, in a shower room. If there's steam about, you shouldn't have any problems. If you drop it in water and take it out fairly quickly, again, you should have no problems. The way they've changed the phone from previous models to make it more water resistant is they've added phone sealant between the display and the battery, a silicon ring to the side buttons, etc., and and they've also done silicon work, etc., on the ports as well. So they have change things it's not ip certificate 
it's certificated IP. It's not. It doesn't have an IP rating, and I know a lot of people will be disappointed by that. That is pretty much it for now. Like I said, I will be doing another review in about a week or so, and then a month's use as well to give you even more information about what I've found, the updates, etc. as they come in. I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know what you think, A, about the design. Do you like the glass? Do you like the cameras being in the middle? Do you like the fingerprint sensor position? Do you like the notch on the front? Do you like the smaller bezel on the bottom? And then the specs. What do you like? What do you not like? Any features you feel that they've missed out on uh, that you would have liked to have seen, and certain features that this has that are better than other the devices on the market. Like and share if you did enjoy this video and found it helpful. Subscribe and hit that little notification bell if you are new to the channel and want to be notified every time I post a video on OnePlus, smartphones in general, tech in general, tech videos pretty much daily on this channel. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful week. Say SPYT. Peace out.